How's it going guys? My name is Matt and you're watching my channel Code Tech Tutorials and today or over maybe the next few days or whatever it ends up taking we're going to be coding up a little game from scratch and this is sort of a follow along example. We're going to use C++ and the intention here is basically to help people understand syntax and project organization and how to put things together and a little bit of problem solving. I would really count this more in the beginner to intermediate region but near the end, we might be getting a little more complicated into the advanced expert or capstone region. But we're going to start out simple and we're going to start out with just uh, building from the ground up. And this is just one of those things where if you're rather new to coding or C++, uh, it's going to really maybe help you understand some of the basic concepts and some some troubleshooting that some programmers might do or some design decisions that programmers might have. So I recommend following along in C++, but really you can use any language if you want to, or if you're just watching this for entertainment, that's cool too. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. Let's just dive right into it. So what we want to do here is we want to make a little RPG. We just want to make like a classic RPG. I'm going to bring up a notepad and we're just going to make just a little, a little bit of a, des a design of uh, what we kind of want to go for. So RPG, kind of a classic style. Let's make like a, a warrior class, a wizard class, or a caster. Now let's make like a cleric or healer class, or maybe you call them support or something. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll stick to these really core basics that are very common on games. And of course the thief class or rogue thief never makes much sense anyway. It's like, what do you you got to steal stuff? That's all your class does is steal stuff. Thief is a terrible class name, you ask me. But okay. So yeah, we'll go with we'll go with this. So the warrior is the typical heavy armor wearing guy. Wizard, of course, being the caster, set in a medieval world type thing. And what do we want to do with these guys? So let's think about this a little bit here. So I guess the main thing we want to do here is we want to have a battle system. Battle system. And we're really just going to make this all like just logic and text to begin with. But later, when we get more advanced, we might put some graphics on top of this logic to make it like an actual real game that you could play. And we'll see. We'll see. I also am kind of going to gauge this as we go because uh, who knows if this like series absolutely tanks and no one's watching it, then you know, why continue kind of thing. But if it's doing well, then sure, we'll, we'll do some awesome stuff with it eventually and maybe even make it fully blown, fully grown. So I am going to say, and I'm going to be doing the same thing, pause frequently. Like anytime you get stuck, pause and try to look up what you're stuck on. Just, I'm kind of interjecting in the middle here. I'm doing this in sort of a live cast way, but I'm doing the same thing. If I get stuck, I'm going to pause the recording and figure out what I'm doing before I continue, at least most of the time, maybe not all the time. I do want to do some live thinking so that you can see like kind of the thinking process some, but don't be afraid if you can't like keep up with this non-paused, uh, constantly going type video because it's often very hard, but hopefully this helps. And I know what a ton of people are already going to say. Uh, just like watching this and watching maybe the, the bit of unpreparedness and that's why didn't you wait till you were more prepared? Well, the reality is if you wait till you're perfectly prepared, you'll never get anything done. So you just got to jump in and go for it and do it. And that's part of the point of this too. Cause like right now, like my throat is bothering me and I feel like I'm going to cough or, you know, get stuck in with phlegm any second and just like driving me crazy. So I, I don't want to start, but I, you know, you got to do it. So if it happens, it happens. All right, so we want a battle system. And to keep it simple, we're going to make it turn-based. And we also maybe want a few like levels. Uh, we don't want to worry about networking, PVP servers, none of that. We might do that later, that could be cool. Because something like this could easily turn into something bigger, but we don't want to keep it super complicated. So let's, we'll have some levels. And that way we can have like a beginning and an end and a little bit of progression. And we'll also have like class levels with, with these guys and uh, we'll say world levels here. And we'll also do like uh, class levels. I don't know where to write that, I guess over here, class levels. So we want to have like a level up system 
and some world levels with uh, different monsters. And of course, uh, we're going to have like uh, abilities, right? Everyone's going to have different abilities and there's going to be maybe a few special things. We're going to have to decide what those are. Uh, let's just come up with a few basic ones. Like the warrior, for example, is going to have uh, highest hit points. Uh, uses best armor. Uh, and this brings up another thing. We're also going to have equipment. So we need to put that in here somewhere. Uh, we will have equipment. And maybe their equipment's going to be like, uh, certain, only certain people can use it, or like the rogue can only use it if he gets a certain talent or something like that. We don't necessarily want to get it that complicated. Uh, but uh, well, yeah, we'll keep it simple. We might not even get to equipment uh, for a long time because we might just default to say, hey, you can level up this and you have heavy armor or something. That would keep it really simple. But the point is really to understand and learn programming, problem solving, and all that. So I hope that all makes sense. So highest hit points, uh, we'll say like, oh, what else would he have? Uh, we'll just stick with highest hit points for now because the rogue might hit harder. The wizard might hit harder or something. It's not necessarily going to be the highest damage. But we do want each class to have like a strong point and maybe the, a weak point. Like we could say, okay, let's say that it's maybe slow moving. Maybe. Eh, we'll just stick with uh, advantages, no disadvantages for, for now. Uh, uses magic. Now, that's an advantage, right? Uses support magic. And we'll say the rogue is uh, the highest uh, consistent damage. Consistent damage. Because uh, they don't necessarily have to use uh, like mana or something like the like the wizard may, and the, you know we'll we'll go with that. Okay, that's fine. And highest consistent. Oh well, maybe even use melee and range damage. Yeah, why not? Melee ranged damage. So we'll just come. We'll just start with these simple things. And what else could we have here? We could have like a shop system that could that could go in with the equipment. Shop. We could do a shop system. And we could also do like a consumable system, like potions and sit and stuff like that. So all right, I keep hitting save and it's popping up the thing, but we're not. We're not oh yeah, we'll save. Uh, we'll call this RPG world thing for. CTT. Okay, there we go. So we got all this to start. That's that's our basic design. So how with code and and the and the magic of computer power do you turn this into a playable thing that can run on your computer that you could ship to your friends and say, hey, play my little game I made. That's that's like the whole point of this. It's not the point is not for it to be good. It's just to get like a base understanding. And that's the whole point of this channel is to basically teach you some basics. So let's get into it. I'm going to drag this off to the side and we're going to launch our thing of choice. Now, this is always a tricky subject. I'd recommend watching like my C++ project structure crash course or something like that, because there are a million different ways to do your project. And uh, I basically just get harassed in the comments no matter what I tell you. If I say, hey, use this one because it's easy, then I get harassed by the, some other user that does it some other way. It's like, no, do it this way. I, I don't care what you use. I'm going to be honest. I don't care what you use. They all work. They're all fine. If there's one that's terrible, then people will tell you, use Ming GW, use MS Build, use Clang. I, I don't care. All right. I am going to use uh, Visual Studio. You know why? Because it's easy. That's why I don't have like a big elaborate reason. It's not better than this or that for any particular thing. It's easy. That's why it handles like everything for you. I don't have to go look up CMake and commands. I don't have to look up make files and figure out stuff. Sure, I can. I've done it a million times, but I don't want to have to do it again. So I'm just going to pick something that does it super easily. So we're going to use Visual Studio 2022. If you want to use something else, Cool. Fair enough. It's going to be just as easy on anything. I could literally do it on whatever too. It's fine. And you could even do it with Python, Java, Go, whatever language you want, because the logic is all going to be the same, but the way you organize things and the way the languages work is different. So I'd recommend C++ if you're following along, but uh, it might even be more fun in JavaScript because you could easily put an interface on like a website or something, but uh, that's totally up to you. We're just going to go to create a new project. Now, when I installed Visual Studio 2022, I did install all the C++ uh, standard stuff. 
I don't remember exactly what it's called, but basically I just checked the C++ uh, development. So that's really all I did. Nothing super special. This is a free program. This is all free. Most of you have Windows. If you don't, you can do it on Linux. If you're using Linux, I'm sure you're bright enough to figure that out and compile with GNU C++ and, and stuff like that. That's fine. If you really need help, join the Discord. If you still need more help, join the Patreon at like the support tier and I'll help you. That's fine. All right, so we're going to start with an empty project. An empty console project. Sounds good. And we're just going to name this uh, Demo RPG. No need to get more elaborate than that. That's all we're going to call it. And we get our stuff over here. We're just going to add a new item. Let's get a source file. It's called source.cpp. We're going to rename it to main. And that's basically it. It gives us a main.cpp. We're going to include IO stream. Oh, yeah, also. I guess I should mention we're not going to use any libraries to start out. We might use some when we get more advanced, like when we're, uh, I guess, if we start adding sound and graphics and stuff like that or any other special stuff. But sure, we'll add in some libraries. But to start out, to get like this basic core game loop going, you don't need anything. You can do it with all the primitives in the language. So no need to get any more advanced. So we're just going to make an int main. I'm sure you're probably already familiar with this. And if you're not, and uh, okay, just very basic C++. It's an entry point for a piece of software. This is where your program starts, of course. So we're gonna try to say all the basic stuff as we go. All right, very good. Now, uh, another just mention of the ways we're gonna do this. Okay, let's go over here and let's make this uh, show the folder sh structure by clicking show all files. Might be a little different for you, but that's all we're gonna do. Uh, yeah, this kind of arranges in a way where you can add multiple runnable solutions or uh, make little libraries and sub libraries and stuff. It's just, just the way the Visual Studio is. You can do it manually with whatever you're using too, or you can just not do it at all and only do one project. If you're starting out, just keep it all in one project. It's going to be a lot simpler that way. But you could, in theory, like make any of these little parts of this their own library or whatever like we could have a shop system library and an equipment library and stuff like that uh, so different terms for different things when i'm saying library in this mode i mean like c plus plus libraries but also you could say like uh, you have like a dictionary of all the different items or equipment and stuff that's kind of a different thing i'll probably call that more like a structure or something just a little odd overlap of terminology there all right uh, that I thought I'd clarify for any of the total newbies out there. All right, so let's let's just add a few things to start out with. Uh, if we're gonna have, um, you know what? Let's even let's even like make this off to the side a little bit, like like this, so we can just keep it in mind. All right, so we need to think about a few things. Maybe maybe we'll go ahead and design some base class stuff today, and a few other things. We'll kind of get like some core stuff. Uh, set up and then we'll link it all together a little more later and uh, not to be confused with the C++ linking I just mean like we're gonna like make it all kind of work together in a flow so I'll try to av avoid overlapping the terminology because you know like linking libraries in C++ is a whole different thing and that's not what I meant there uh, we're gonna try to avoid that like I said, we're not really going to use any libraries here. We're just going to stick to the primitives. All right, so let's make let's make our classes. Now, all these classes are going to have some things in common. For example, they're all going to have uh, hit points, right? They're all going to have like some amount of HP, and they're all going to have what else? They're going to have like an attack. They're going to have uh, you know maybe a few other things. We'll think of something else. But for now, we're just going to stick with hit points and maybe an attack. All right, so we we can we could either put these in their own file or we could just like put them all above the main. Uh, either's really fine. Uh, if we put them in their own file, let me think here for a second. Yeah, no, let's just let's put them up here for now. So let's have like a, a structure. There's a struct called uh, HP, and HP. Uh, we might even make this a class actually. Well, yeah, we'll make this a class. Actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and let's make this some own file because it's going to get confusing after a while. So we'll go new item. Let's just do a header. And we're just going to call this hp.h. 
and that's it. So then we'll take this class that we started to build and we'll copy it in here. We've got a pragma once at the top, so it doesn't get double included anywhere. And we're just going to keep it a plain old class. We're going to have public and we're going to have private. And we could also have protected because I think we might be inheriting from this, uh, but we'll see. So uh, privately, we're going to have like, and, uh, and we'll just stick with integers for the most part here. Uh, yeah, that's going to keep it simple. Uh, we'll have like a, a current HP. And then we're going to have int max HP. That way we can keep track of a hit point bar. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the good old hit point bar. And we're not going to get much more complicated than, like, than that. But we could do something like uh, shield. We could have like, you know how uh, in games you often have a shield that absorbs some stuff. We're not going to do that, I don't think, now. Hmm. Or we could do like temporary HP for shield. Uh, why, actually, why not? Let's do it. Let's go... Let's go with temp HP or shield or something. Yeah, we'll call it shield. Shield HP. Uh, that, that's good enough for now. Now, ideally, if you're going to be doing math in these and like uh, percents and stuff, you probably want these to actually be floats or doubles. But we're going to stick with integers so that they round nicely. And if we have to do some math, we'll do it in our functions and then we'll round to an integer. And uh, that, that should be fine. And also, it often doesn't make sense for like your max HP to be negative or zero. So maybe integer is not even the best choice. Maybe like an unsigned int is better or a uh, standard uint32 underscore t. And of course we want to use that. We've got to include c standard int. To get that, and that's just a 32-bit unsigned integer. And we could do a similar thing here too. We could go standard int 32t. Uh, that's assuming we're going to have some pretty big pools of, of hit points because like a 32-bit integer is huge. So if we really cared about space and we were making this for like a calculator or something, maybe we'd make these a little smaller, like a 16-bit or something, right? And we probably want them all to be the same type. Actually, you know what? Current HP... Is, is not going to, neither of these can ever really be zero. So let's just let's just start with unsigned. Let's do all unsigned because none of these ever want to be negative, right? And we'll do some checks to make sure they don't like go into the negative because what happens with an unsigned integer, if it goes negative, it actually ends up to, turning into a giant positive. So uh, you can look that up if you want, but basically it wraps around to the top end. So uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. You can look it up if you want to know more, but it's uh it's not too complicated so we can look up the max size of this and we'll do some googling on the fly here because this is what programmers do let's see so brought up a window and we'll go uh max size of a un 30 or un 16 and uh and it looks like it's sixty-five thousand, or this hexadecimal we're not really going to get too, too into the hexadecimal stuff but it's basically uh, as you can see here, it's four bytes, and this would be the max size. Uh, the 32-bit one is eight bytes, so we can get more precision. But uh, in our small game, I don't think we're going to be getting, you know, we're not going to deal with giant hit points, because, um, like, the max damage is not going to be anywhere close to that, I don't think, starting out. Now, uh, another thing we could do, and we'll just get right into this, since uh, since it's part of the thing, is we could we could do some kind of type def. So if we want to change these later, we don't have to change them throughout the entire program. We just change them in one place. So let's go ahead and do that, actually. Let's just add another header file. And we'll call this, like, uh, like hit point types. Sure. Doesn't really matter. Dot .h, fine. Uh, and we'll just... Uh, this one, we will include the C standard. Int dot .h or whatever it was. Let's just see standard int. Yeah, let's get the dot h off of there. Don't need it. All right. Uh, yours may, depending on what you're using. Oh, Linux might be a little different. Uh, stuff like that. But uh, we'll just do a type def. And we'll say that... Uh, uh, how does type def work? I always forget the order of these. always forget which one you put first. So you just... We just Google search, uh, type def, C++, very good, and then we'll find some info on it. Uh, simple enough. Now, you don't really want to look at, there's going to be like a bunch of blog articles, and just like, 
just people with their own little versions of things, I would recommend not looking at those if you can avoid it because you'll get conflicting information. Sometimes people will make a blog article and they'll be like using some specific thing and uh, they'll say what's right for them, but it's not going to be right for every OS. So usually you want to look at the actual reference, which is this website right here. Uh, this, this is going to be like the actual specification uh, in general. So you, you, correct me if I'm wrong on that. And it's, it's generally what I use. So what you do is you do a uh, type def. Let's see. Okay, there's an ill-formed one. Just learn about it real quick here. There's a simple type def. That's probably all we're going to use. So you, you declare type def, the type, and then what you want to call it. So this will be our specific name. So we're going to be using standard UN16T, right? Underscore T. And we're going to call this, uh, I guess, HP type for now. So now the point of this is going to be if we ever want to change this type, we don't have to go in all over our program and change these. We can just change it in one spot. And this way we can just use HP type for here. There we go. And we don't actually have to include C standard int anymore. We're just going to include uh, with double quotes our hit point types dot h. Okay. And that should rectify itself shortly. Did I spell? Oh, it's got two T's. Okay. So yeah, I'm just kind of winging the names and there we go. This seems pretty happy. This HP type resolves to uh, uint 16t and if we decide later we want these to be something else we just change it here and it changes throughout the program pretty common thing you see in programs uh, is stuff like this just to help simplify it all right so there we go we got that so those are private we're not going to be able to access them uh, so what we want to do here is just uh, like a we want to make a, a few functions that modify these and modify them correctly because if we're losing or gaining hit points in any particular situation we don't want it to mess up because we want it to check if there's a shield first reduce from the shield if we're out of shield um, or, or whatever maybe there's some special abilities that we ignore shield uh, we're not going to deal with that that's too complicated for this particular thing but you, you get the point so we want functions that modify these private variables in our case and you don't have to do this you could it's just going to be a lot messier and a lot more error prone if you don't do it this way. Because what if you have something that does more damage than your current HP and then it takes it negative. But since it's negative and it's an unsigned in, it wraps around to a huge positive. And then suddenly, because you took too much damage, your current HP is like a gazillion, but your max HP is only 10. And you're like, what the heck? My program's crashing. My current HP is a million. My, my character's hitting for 99999 when he's supposed to only be hitting for four. You know, there's going to be all kinds of weird stuff if you mess this up is the point. So you want to have functions to kind of like control what's happening here. And, and that's the point. And this is where some logic comes in, where you, it comes in where you got to think about things. you got to think about how the types work and uh, make it basically error proof the best you can. You want to make it so that like no matter what happens in your program, it's not going to cause anything strange to happen. It'll resolve correctly. And uh, the player playing the game is not is not going to have that moment where, like, they say, man, you've probably done this if you've played like, any game ever, because it always happens in games. They're always really glitchy. And you're not going to have people going, WTF devs, do you have a brain? And stuff like that, you know? Uh, we just want it to work correctly, and we want people to have a good experience, right? That's the whole point here. So let's make, like, a, a thing to set your max HP. Void set max HP. And it's going to take an HP type and it's going to, we'll just call it new max HP. And obviously it can't be zero, right? If your H, max HP is zero, then that, that just doesn't work. So we'll say if new uh, max HP max HP is uh, less than one, then what? I don't know. We'll return, I guess. It's not necessarily a great case because it will get ignored. And uh, we probably want like some kind of error case here, actually. Uh, so maybe we'll think about that. We'll come back to that. But return isn't necessarily the best thing. Maybe we want to return like a, a true or a false here. So a bool 
uh, for success and we'll do the comment returns uh, true if set successfully all right so then this one we would say return false because it said that's just what example of something you could do that's that's fine there could be other stuff you could return the new max hp and maybe if it's zero then you know it's a problem there's other ways you can handle it is the point but this should be fine for now and it will allow us to write a little error checking later in our codes but otherwise if it's not zero which uh if it's anything that's not less than one it's not zero because it's an unsigned integer uh it's going to be fine so we'll just say max hp equals current hp and now let's think about some other scenarios so what if you change your max hp and now your current hp is like higher or wait i, I typed this wrong max hp equals new max hp right um so what if now maybe you set this and your current hp is now off and doesn't work uh so we just have to account for that we'll just make a little if statement if uh current hp is greater than max hp then we'll just say current hp equals max hp so uh, that way it just equals it but if it's already less than the max then it's not going to increase it's just going to stay the same so that, that just uh, that should handle most of the cases there and boom we got a, a nice little set max hp function it should work pretty good there and if it gets to the bottom here we'll just return true because it's successful and very good so the only true error case here or nah, a weird way of wording it the only error case here is if they try to set it to zero and that's just not allowed uh so yeah very good fair enough that's that's fine for now and yes we're writing this in a header file uh, we're going to build everything as just a single object with this main for now we might change that later but that's why i'm building everything in header files uh, because i'm just going to include it all in the main uh, but uh, this particular thing is probably going to get included or uh, used for these classes later so we're basically going to be building these classes for a little while and once those are all done we'll move on to the other systems all right so let's continue let's write a few more things uh, we just want to write some other things to handle all these other things so what if we have let's have another one a bool uh like a take damage we could do a take damage uh hp type uh damage so it would just be amount of damage and this will basically be a subtract operation pretty straightforward here they could take zero damage that'd be fine no problems there do we really need a bull here not necessarily we could probably stick with void i don't think we need to return anything in this case um if they take uh let's say so we'll just go current hp or right, maybe we'll do a quick check here like if damage damage is greater than current hp then we'll just set current hp to zero because we don't want them to go negative that's going to like mess stuff up in our, our theory i mean maybe in your game you want people to go negative because like in dungeons and dragons for example you can go negative and hit points you just uh you're actually still alive at zero you're still alive at negative five you die when you get below what negative 10 i don't know the rules may have changed a little bit i haven't played in a bit but so some games allow for negative we're not going to allow for negative dead is zero there is no other case or we'll maybe we'll say unconscious because maybe we'll have some revive thing that the cleric can do or something but we're going to keep it simple we don't want it to be like hardcore mode where you die forever we're just going to say you're like unconscious or something um and we'll we'll figure more out later if we need to uh we'll just say hp equals zero so if the damage they're taking is more than their current hp we'll just set their hp to zero don't really need to do any further calculating uh so in that case we would just return afterwards and now since we got more than one line in this if statement uh we're gonna we're gonna need some brackets here but all this return does is, is say uh, exit from the function uh yeah i guess i am assuming some c plus plus knowledge here um maybe i should have said that earlier but if i go over every little thing this will go on for literally ages so it's just not possible uh, i have some tutorials on beginner c plus plus if you want to see those and there's a lot of beginner stuff out there so uh yeah you're going to need some, to know those basics of course of whatever language you're doing it and otherwise okay so if we didn't return there we're just going to go current hp 
minus equals damage. And that should be it. We shouldn't need to do anything further. We could do a check here to see if there's zero, but uh, we'll do that somewhere else. Uh, no worries, because we don't have like a Boolean for alive or dead or unconscious or anything like that. This is just a plain HP pull with some functions to handle it. And let's write a few more, and then we're going to get out of here. Uh, so we just need one for like uh, maybe heal. So void uh, heal. And once again, we will take an HP type of uh, uh, mount. We'll just call this one a mount. Maybe it should all be called a mount. Not too sure, but we could say that... Uh, yeah, let's do some simple checks here. We'll say if uh, mount uh, plus current HP is greater I have insert press or something? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. If amount plus the current HP is greater than max HP, then we're just gonna set it to max. Alright, because we don't we don't you can't overheal. We're not gonna allow overhealing. Some games allow overhealing. Maybe you have a special ability where it says if you overheal, you get a little shield or something. We're not gonna do that right now. If we need to, we can. Uh, and for that sort of stuff, what you basically want to do is make this uh, so that it is virtual and that you can override it. But uh, we'll worry about that later because maybe we'll give a priest some little ability like that or something like that. Or maybe the warrior will have an ability that says, hey, you can overheal a little bit and you get a shield. But uh, uh, that could be something cool and that might be cool for teaching a concept later. So we'll, we'll come back to that one. All right. So we'll just say current HP equals max HP. That's what I was typing here. Very good. Otherwise, uh, okay, and if that happens, if that case happens, we just want to return. Uh, and if that case doesn't happen, then we're just going to go uh, current HP plus equals amount. We already know that's not greater than the max HP because we did that check right here, so this should be fine. Now, I'm writing these functions off the top of my head with some quick logic that I'm just coming up with like right now. So it's very, very possible that I am um, introducing some error cases. These might not be perfect. And for that, what we probably want to do is write some test functions. Now, a test function would basically be something we run in our main or uh, something, or if we make these their own standalone library, and we have a set of tests that go with them to say, hey, let's make sure the HP stuff is all working correctly, run the set of tests for every scenario possible. Uh, we could get into that. I guess let me know if you want to, we could do like a test thing, but tests take a long time to write. And I think just me saying that might give you a gist of how it goes. But uh, we're not going to do that for now. We're just going to we're just going to skip over that whole testing thing. But actually, it's a good idea to test if you're doing a real project because of that stuff I just said. So I think that covers the most of it. We could, let's make a shield. Let's say uh, void uh, set shield. Oh, you know what? Uh, before we do the shield, let's consider this take damage. Uh, plus shield. All right, because actually we want the shield to uh, be calculated in this damage. We want the damage to be taken off the shield first. So current HP is minus equal to the damage. Well, well, we could do it with the shield first. We could go, uh, yeah, shield HP minus equals damage. Uh, if shield is, uh, you know, we're going to have a little special logic here for the shield. You know what? Actually, let's forget the shield. The shield's making it too complicated. Let's just leave the shield off. So we're just going to delete all the shield logic. Let's keep it plain old HP. Uh, throw in a shield in there. Yeah, we could do it. It's just going to take a lot longer, and it's going to make it a lot more complicated of logic for uh, this taking damage because we're going to have to calculate and do they have a shield? How much of a shield take that amount of damage off of uh, how much damage they're taking and reduce the shield or reduce just the shield a little bit and then return? You know, there's going to be a lot of additional cases, and this function would just grow to, like, this big, basically, uh, probably. So uh, maybe there's a really simple way of writing it that I'm not thinking of. Uh, if you can think of it, awesome. I am going to make this repo public at some point. I have no idea where it's going to be at the time of these 
video releases, but there we go. I think this is good enough for an HP pool. Uh, yep, looks good. So we got a set max HP, take damage, heal. Yeah, I think that's all we really need. Uh, so yeah, we can just... Uh, we also want some getters and setters. That's... I well, we got kind of setters. It's these right here. But uh, we... And you're just going to have to heal to set current HP, I think. Uh, so... Because you could just heal for like a huge amount and it'll set you to the max all the time, basically. But we want a way to for the user to get the HP and get the uh, current HP and the max HP, because these are private. You're not going to be able to access them unless you make a friend class of like uh, friend class, and then we'll have all these different classes, warrior, wizard, whatever. So we don't want to do that. We're just going to go uh, HP type get max HP, and then we'll just return whatever it currently is. That way we have a public access version. We might change just how this works later. Uh, so there's that. Uh, yeah, let's actually put it up here by the setter. Okay, cool. And we could do the same thing for the other one. Get current HP. It might be better for these to be like protected so that whatever inherits from this would work, but we haven't fully decided how we're going to use these yet for our uh, warrior wizard cleric rogue. So we'll start building those in next episode because this one's getting a little long, a little longer than I intended, but we've got like kind of the core design uh, worked out and we know some stuff to build so we can just continue to type away and chug away until it's going. So that's kind of where I wanted to, to get with the starting episode. And I, uh, of course, you know what current HP is there. Current HP. But tell you what, actually, you know what? I'm just going to release this as is, like immediately. I'll put this repo up. And if you guys want to uh, hack on this and make any little tiny improvements, awesome. Uh, but uh, I'll come out with the next one as soon as I can. And if I can get your updates in there, cool. If not, sorry. But uh, I'm going to try to keep it rolling as quickly as possible. Try to release these every day until uh, we get to a sweet point or I get so burnt out that I can't take it anymore or you guys harass me for something so badly in the comments that I just give up and quit YouTube altogether. We'll see what happens first. You can support me on Patreon. You can hit the join button down below and uh, yeah, don't forget to hit like on this video. Share it if you know a new coder that wants to code along with stuff and learn some basics and, and get going with a little project like this. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Link down below for all the stuff I mentioned, probably, unless I forget to leave a link. All right. Peace out.